Can you hear us okay, Kyle? Yep. Can you guys All hear right. me? We got you, yeah. Uh, we'll get started. We'll start first with Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Brad, I'll have a couple things. Um, Kyle, obviously – a, 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 a tough break, I, I guess, no pun intended, but when you, you, you come back from all and, and work so hard in the off season and then suffer that injury, what are kind of the initial thoughts that, that go through your head after putting in the work and, and then having that setback? It was a, uh, it was a shocker. You know, I, I felt so ready to go. I was so ready physically and mentally to go, give it a go again. And I felt confident and comfortable in the spring. And uh, obviously the spring didn't end as well as I'd like it to. And now here we are back at ground zero, back on the field, which is nice. And uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been quite a experience. And I remember a lot of people were like, so you're, you're done now. Huh? And I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm, I'm going to keep going. And, you know, here we are six months later, I'm back on the field. So I'm happy that I stuck with it. That kind of gets into my second question. Andy just mentioned that, one of the things that's defined you during this process is just your positivity. What's allowed you to stay positive and what motivated you to, to want to keep going anyway? Being around such great, uh, such a great facility, so many great players and people and being under the tutelage of so many great coaches here. Um, you know, so many future hall of famers walking around. It's like, if you don't have a smile on your face and you don't have a positive attitude, you need to get yourself checked because uh, I can assure you the grass is not always greener. You know what I'm saying? Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Kyle, I also have uh, two questions for you, and it's good to see you. Uh, just what can you lean on from your experience, given that you didn't have preseason uh, for when you are given the opportunity to play? And because you've been out, how do you feel like you've helped your teammates um, maybe in the film room, uh, on the sideline during games? Just how do you feel like you've made an impact even though you haven't been in uniform yet. Well, Nate, thank you. Uh, it's good to see you guys as well, guys and gals. Uh, I will say uh, you asked how I was able to help them. I really think it's how they have been able to help me. I mean, you look at the rookies that we have in our room. You look at the veterans we have in our room. And uh, to a man on our roster in our room, uh, we got guys that work hard every day that focus on what they're supposed to do. And you've seen it every Sunday. It's been a, a lot of fun to be a part of a group like this and, you know, they don't grow on trees. So making the most of that and just uh, trying to keep my mind, I've been in every meeting since I got injured. I've been, you know, everything I can do, I've, I've done. And I put myself in as good a position as I can put myself in. And I think leaning on my great teammates in the offensive line room from Orlando to Joe, to Creed, you know, to Trey, Lucas, Mike, all those guys, I mean, down to Daryl and, you know, Austin Blythe and the guys that you get to work with on a daily basis, lift with, and eat with, and meet with. It's a special thing. It's, uh, I wish everybody could experience what an offensive line could do to a, a personality and an attitude. Yeah, and, and just I, I, I mentioned earlier, just what from your experience, I, I know you retired and now you're coming out of retirement, but when you get the opportunity to be on the field, um, what will you lean on most from your previous experience since you didn't get the chance to kind of gear up like most guys did with the preseason? You have to just lean on your preparation and have the utmost in faith in yourself and your teammates. I mean, um, if you're out on the field, then you, you've done the, the work to get there and you need to have faith in what you've done to prepare. And albeit a short preparation, you know, uh, do whatever you can and, you know, leave no stone unturned. So the haze in the barn when you hit the, uh, hit the pillow on a Saturday night or, you know, whenever it is. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go to Pete. <clears throat> hey, Kyle, congrats on, on the recovery. I know that in your absence, you've watched this line and it's really developed and they have some pretty good guards. I know that you had the, the right tackle year in, in 15 where you were able to make the Pro Bowl. What's the willingness level to maybe play tackle? Have, have they been working you there? I'll, I'll do whatever they want me to do. I mean, obviously, uh, we've got a bunch of guys that can play in a bunch of different spots and we've seen that in years past. So whatever Coach Heck and Coach Reed want to do, uh, I'm here to help. That's why I'm in red. And, uh, I'm happy to do it. So we've got three more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Harold. Go ahead, Harold. Kyle, it's been forever. Good to see you again. Uh, you've had the opportunity to watch this team, you know, from a distance at least, from, but from beginning to end through training camp. I'm just wondering when the team was kind of going through its, you know, three and four stage, what 
even though you're new to the team, what gave you that kind of confidence that you believe that this team's going to come back and get to where they are right now, which is on a four game win streak? I mean, you got to just keep your head, your head down and focus on what's important at the time. And uh, I know we had, uh, you know, a, a rough time at some points in the season early, but I mean, that stuff's so in the rear view mirror. We're just focused on what's ahead of us today and how we can best prepare for the Denver Broncos. Let's go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. And Brad, I've got two, if I could, please. Uh, I know, uh, Kyle, you were just asked about, uh, you know, maybe working in a tackle. And everybody, I know uh, diversity is a big thing with this offensive line. I know it's something that Coach Reed talks about, and we've we've seen it through the years, guys moving around along the spots. They do it more here. Is there is there more prep for the different positions here than you've been in other places? Or is it pretty much the same? Hey, that's the modern NFL. Everybody works at a lot of different spots. Is it more or less here? It's hard to compare two spots, but I will say probably Coach Hack has done um, a far more extensive job of preparing guys to be in swing situations because he's played the position. He understands, you know, at the drop of a dime, you need to be uh, – at the drop of a hat, you need to be ready to, to be anywhere. And then uh, the offense has had a lot of success here of late, and I'm, I'm sure that was part of the attraction as well as the, the people and everything you talked about, the chance to come be in it. Now that you've been around it, immersed in it, seen it not just in training camp, but I know you haven't been out on the field yet with it, but, but how it plays and works, what is it that makes the offense uh, you know, stand out and so unique and why it's stood up here for so many years? Well, people think superstars just wake up and it just happens. And getting an opportunity to be around superstars, I see that there's a tremendous amount of work and details that go into the success that uh, we all, you know, get to experience and see on Sundays. Um, it's a testament to the, it starts at the top with Big Red and uh, it works its way down through the whole staff, um, bringing in energy and practicing with a purpose. I mean, the way Pat goes about his business, the way Trav goes about his business, everybody, I mean, everybody here is about one thing and that's football and uh, it's fun and I love it. And we'll go last to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Kyle, uh, welcome back. Um, wanted to ask you about something you said earlier. You said maybe some people would kind of assume maybe you were done with football when you were injured, and you said, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to play again. So what told you this rehab was going to be worth it, that, that if you went through this, you were still um, – there were still going to be good things waiting for you in your football career? And, Brad, I'll uh, have a second question as well. Well, thank you uh, for welcoming me back. I appreciate that. Um, and – I will say that the feelings I had when I was out for a year and I was working in the media, I didn't want to just have a recycled uh, mindset. You know, if, if, if I were to get hurt this past spring and walk away, I'd be sitting at home right now saying I'd be healthy by now. I could, you know, maybe help this team. Uh, you know, maybe there was, you know, something that I would be missed in, but uh, I don't have that doubt because I'm here and I haven't missed any days. And, these guys have helped me out through that. And it's, I mean, it's, it's this team, it's the roster. It's the, you know, the buildup of a team is so important. These guys make going to work fun and playing football is fun as is. So it's a double whammy there. Okay. And um, have the coaches said anything to you about whether you're going to be in uniform on Sunday night? Uh, no, I haven't heard. So. All right, Kyle, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. All right.